today what I want to talk about is stroker cams. I get asked that all the time and, and particularly not just stroker cams, but stroker cams for towing. So we can talk about stroker cams too, but I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. Winning. The question is when people want more torque and we associate that with towing, especially more low speed torque. Um, and we talked about that the other day where we were talking about, well, where actually do you want the torque? Do you want it at 600 RPM or a thousand or 1500 or 2000? Where do you want it? And we talked about the realities of towing, you know, wh where, what RPM are you at? Well, when you're actually using, when you're actually towing something, so you got something heavy behind you, and if you're just driving down the road, you're just cruising down the road. It's like 2,000 RPM for most modern vehicles that have overdrive transmissions. You're not, you're not needing extra torque then, because you're just cruising down the road. It makes enough power to cruise down the road at 60, 70 miles an hour, whatever you're driving. It's when you're going up hills that you need the extra power. And when you go up hills, you're gonna drop down a gear. So if you're, you hit a grade and you're towing your boat or trailer, fifth wheel, whatever it is, you're going to drop down to a different gear and you're going to be at a higher engine speed. That's where you need your power. So we talked about that the other day. The question though is, and, and one of the ways that you can add more power to any combination is to, to make the motor bigger. That, that adds more power everywhere, but the nice thing is that it adds more power down low. So if you go up from a 4.8 or a 5.3, you go from a 4.8 to a 5.3, that's better to a 6.0, that's better. You go from a 4.8 or a 5.3, to a 383 stroker and go from a 60 to a 408. And the 408 is what we're gonna look at today. It's very common for six liter stuff. You can do a 415 if you have the 62 block with the bigger bore, but you're basically putting a four inch stroke crank in it and that adds lots of extra power. But the question becomes then, okay, I wanna put together a 408. What camshaft should I put in that if I'm making it for a tow motor? I don't care that it's revving to you know, 6,500 or 7,000 RPM. This is not a drag race motor. This is more of a motor for, you know, my daily or my towing thing that I would use, you know, and, and as a 408, it's already going to make good power. So you, you know, if you want to spin the tires occasionally in your tow vehicle, you, you can do that. If you want to go, you know, do donuts and get coffee or whatever, that's all fine. You can get ice cream. You can do that in it. But if we want to tailor the power combination so that it's in the usable RPM range, meaning for most tow applications, it's gonna be like 5,000 and lower, let's say. Because that's kind of where you'd be running. Yeah, you, you might really zing it up to 5,500 if you're down, if you drop down two gears and you're towing something really heavy and you're going up a big mountain grade, maybe, maybe you're in second gear and not third gear anymore. Um, and, and that's all possible. But what we wanna look at different cams. And so the best way for me to illustrate this it'd be good to go out and actually do some, you know, towing and do some acceleration runs up a grade or whatever with different combinations. That would be cool. That would be fairly costly and time consuming. But looking at the dyno results, we can kind of get a pretty good idea of what's going on. And certainly as a comparison between a couple of different cam sizes. And then if we read between the lines, we can get even more you know, e even more ideas on where we might choose cams that would go between the ones that I tested. Because when I tested these camshafts, I didn't test them specifically for towing applications, but they give us a really good idea because I use mild cams. So the question is, and you guys let me know in the comments. So if you've got, if you build a 408 stroker, you could do a 383, but if you did a 383 or a 408 stroker, should you use a stock cam? So w should you put that in there? Is that going to be the best camshaft, even though you've gone up in displacement? is that going to be the best combination and get you the best mileage and the best torque production that you want while, while you're driving down the road? The, the answer obviously is probably not. As you go up in displacement, you can put more camshaft in these things. And not only that, they want more camshaft. Now I didn't go all the way down to 2000 RPM. I think we went down to 26 or 2700 on this when I was testing this 408, but this was a 408 where we ran a stock cam we ran a small 206 cam, and then I went up to a 224 cam. In the middle there is where I think a truck Norris should go. Um, and also you could get the, so, so the two cams I have available right now, if you guys are interested in them, I have a, a 212 and a 219 cam, which would slot in between the 206 and the 224 cam that I use on this. Those are the 224 is more of a performance application and we'll see exactly what it does when we talk about the results here. But so when I ran the, 
when we ran this 408, it had airflow research heads. It had a fast manifold on it. It had long tube headers on it. It had uh, it had a dish piston in it. It had 10cc dish piston in it. So the compression was probably mid tens, I'm thinking. I'd have to do the calculation on it exactly. But we ran it with a Holly and we ran it, you know, optimized air fuel and timing and everything. Now, obviously this, your combination might be different than this. You might not have really good heads like the Airflow Research heads, which are excellent heads. Um, you might not have a fast manifold. You might just have a truck manifold. What would happen is the starting and the ending point would be different, but the relative changes would still be the same. So what we did was we ran it first with a stock cam, like a six liter truck cam. And with that camshaft, our 408 made 449 horsepower and 522 foot-pounds of torque. So we see that it made, with a stock cam, it made a lot more torque than it made horsepower, which is exactly what that cam does when the motor's a 6 liter, too. It makes more torque than horsepower. Not by a lot, but by some. In this case, it made a lot more torque than horsepower because the thing now is bigger. So, but it did good. I mean, it made um, 500 foot pounds from 3,400 out to 40, well, let's call it 46 or 4,700 RPM. So it did pretty good. And it was above 450, 60, 70, like it was like 480, even down at 2,700 RPM. So it did good. Then I put a 206 cam in it. Go ahead and get our 206 cam there. And the specs on the 206 cam, that was a crane cam. It was five, it was only 500 lifts, so not very big. A 206, 214, and a 114. You know, guys can argue about <laughs> that. I'm not saying that that's the ideal cam. I'm saying that that's the cam that I tested. So you could make this cam better. You could make, have it make more power. You could have it make more power in the RPM range. You could change the LSA. You could you could change the lift value. You you know there are, there are things that you could do to that camshaft. When and this is an important point that a lot of people don't understand. This particularly people that want to argue argue this point. When I'm testing things, I'm not telling you that this is what you should use. In fact, I'm not telling you that at all. <laughs> in fact, when I show you the things that I tested, a lot of times I'm talking about giving you an indication like maybe here, there's things that are better. There, there could be things that are better. This is just what I had. When, when we did this test, we had this crane cam. And so we tried it when we had this 408. Really, the 408 was just put together to try to make more than 600 horsepower, which you put a good size cam shaft in. It ended up doing that. Not a problem. We tried an even bigger cam. It just didn't make any more power. So this was a really good test, a really good learning experience. So while we were there, hey, let's start out with a stock cam so we have a baseline. And hey, I've got this 206 cam, I've got this 224 cam. You know, we've got a bunch of different cams that we can try. How how do those other cams, you know, it's just time and time and money to test all this stuff. So how do these other cams compare? But we put this 206, 214 camshaft in at 500 lift. Again, not, not a lot of lift, but it picked up power everywhere. So from 26 or 2700, one, two, three, yeah, 2,700 RPM. Um, it made more power everywhere. So it made more horsepower, it made more torque. So for the peak numbers, instead of 449 horsepower, it, it now made 515 horsepower. That's out at 5,400 RPM compared to 5,100 RPM for the stock cam. So it, it raised where it made peak power by 300 RPM, but it's making a lot more power. I mean, you know, it's up from... 450 to 515, so 65 horsepower right off the bat. Just way better, especially on the big end, everywhere. Down low, it's it's better. It's it's up 20 foot pounds at 2800 RPM. So it's just got a good gain all the way through the first part of the curve. At at 4500 RPM, it's up 47 foot pounds. And 4,500 RPM is an RPM range that you would be using when you're towing if you downshifted from one gear to the other. So that's still a meaty part of the torque curve when you're towing had you downshifted from overdrive into, into third gear, let's say, on a typical 4L60 or 4L80 transmission. So this mild cam, let's say, for a 408, it certainly is, because we see it's still making more torque than horsepower, pretty good indication that this is a mild cam. This camshaft, better than the stock one. So the stock one isn't gonna give you more, more low speed torque. It's not gonna give you more, more 
peak torque certainly than than the right size cam, especially on a, on a um, especially on a stroker application. So uh, we went from that to the next step up was a 224 cam. So that was a pretty good size cam shaft. That was the Crane 224 that I use on a lot of stuff. It was 590 lift. It was a 224, 232, and I think it was a 113, 115. So 590, 224, 232, and a 115. Again, <laughs> not saying that that's an ideal camshaft. I'm just saying that I've run that camshaft a number of times, and it's and it's worked well. <clears throat> so compared to stock, the the 224 cam was down a little bit from 3,800 and below. Not a ton, but it was, they traded, you know, six, eight horsepower foot pounds in that range. But at 4,500, the 224 cam compared to the stock cam was up 51 foot pounds of torque. So if you did downshift with that camshaft and you didn't have enough, you know, you didn't have the low speed power of the stock cam and you downshifted, you'd have an extra 50 foot pounds and you definitely noticed that. So it, it's a it's a good gain um, compared to the stock cam, and in fact, from 3,800 on up, it makes more torque than the stock cam. It just makes similar torque bouncing back and forth. Like I said, 10, 10, it's it's down, but but down below 27 or 2,800, it's like 15. Let's see. Yeah, uh, 15 to 17 foot pounds down low, and that would get worse as we as we went down. But above that, it's better. The 224 cam is only better than the the 206 cam above 4500 RPM or above 4400 RPM. So of the two of those, I think that I probably for towing, I think I probably would pick the 206 cam over the 224 cam, even though the 224 cam made more peak torque. When we put the 224 cam in, the power jumped up from 449 with a stock cam and 522 foot pounds to 584 horsepower. So it picked up 135 foot horsepower. So it's a lot. And went from 522 to 566 foot pounds. So it picked up 44 foot pounds. Compared to the 206 cam, it was up 10 foot pounds and it went from 515 to 584. So about 70 horsepower better than the 206 cam. So this should bring us to the discussion of, okay, maybe the 206 cam isn't, that, that seems like a fairly good choice, but on a 408, I, I might want something a little bigger than that. I probably don't want what the 224 is for a towing application. This puts us right in the truck Norris range. <laughs> so between a 206 and a 224, a, two, a 212 cam, and especially with the valve events that are offered by that truck Norris cam, that's slotted right in the middle there. And I think what would happen is I, I think we would get real close to matching everything that the 206 did down low and then having more power above that. So I think, especially in the towing range, 5,500 and below, I kind of think that that 212 truck Norris cam would be the best choice. I, I wish I would have tested it so we could get exact numbers and, and looking at it as a torque thing, I wish I would have at least gone down to 2,500 or so, 24 or 2,300. And so we could really get a good idea on, you know, because we could take the average power production for all of these. And I would be curious to see what, what's happening down there. Because on a bigger motor, we're not going to lose any power compared to the stock one. Like on this 206 cam, we were up everywhere. I think that that probably would continue down to all of the usable RPM range that we would see with a stock converter range. So I think uh, I think something bigger than the 206 probably would work. Like I said, the Truck Norris cam, if you guys need one of those, I, <laughs> I have some of those in stock. Um, or the other option is going one step up from that, but still a step below the 224 cam is that 219 cam that I have. So those two are slotted in between the 206 and the 224 cam, but the 219 cam is not going to make the low speed power that the truck Norris does. It is going to make more peak power, 
but for what we're looking for, I, I would have to actually test that and see how that slots in between those two. I'm still, would still be kind of for a towing application, leaning on this kind of stroker more toward the truck Norris. Um, but maybe, <laughs> maybe your personality is skewed more toward the performance side of it. Cause and especially on a 408, the 219 cam is definitely going to make more power than the truck Norris. It's going to be on this kind of motor. It's going to be up a, a good 20 compared to the truck Norris cam. It's just that it's also going to be down, down low. I just don't know on the 408 where that crossover is going to be for this. Um, but it would be interesting. And this is why I like testing cam so much is, yeah, we know a bigger cam makes more power, but where does that crossover happen? How bad is the torque loss down there? Sometimes it's not terrible. You know, does it carry it out? Does, does it make the average power that I want? There's a lot of good stuff here. How is the idle quality? You know, all of that stuff. There's there's so much to picking that right cam, Jeff. That's why when everybody asks for, wow, what's the best cam that I could put in my 5.3? Well, your best because of your five or ten things that we use to choose a camshaft the order that you have is different and and the number ones and the number twos and the number threes are probably different so your thing is going to be different than another kind of camshaft that's why and and cam not not just me but cam manufacturers and sellers if they're good at what they do and most of them are they ask a lot of questions when helping you pick a camshaft but one thing that does happen, and I'll have to say, and I see this with when people come to me after they've gotten other cam recommendations from other people, especially if they've gotten multiple ones. Because if they've gotten multiple ones, they get different recommendations from different manufacturers. And some of that, I think, and you guys let me know what you think in the comments, some of that, I think, is from people <laughs> interjecting their personal opinion along with the data that they're extrapolating. So maybe you're a stage four kind of guy, and so you lean more toward and push people more toward the stage four kind of camshaft. Maybe you're a stock cam or stage one kind of guy and or gal, and then you push people more toward the milder cam. So you do that, you you put that bias in there as an individual, We all and we all have those. You put those in there, even when looking at the same bunch of data and and that's the thing you get you know you get multiple choices and then you decide between those what your particular individual bias is okay look i'm i'm more of a i would rather have the thing drive nice i care more about that i'd rather have the power i'd rather have the chop whatever that is you you pick between all those even if guys recommended had recommended different camps and there you have it. There's my spiel on 408 cams. I'm going to try to scroll back here and get some... Uh... What's up? What's up? Good morning, everyone. Richard, when did the stock cam shoot up do? When you do the stock cam, do you know which LS7 cam you use? I see there are two variations. One was used in the Z28. has 1251 on the back of it. It was, it was earlier than that. It was the, the one that I used was from the um, 7 liter in the Corvette. Nick Garage, he tested a long ram on 440. He had trouble. Yeah, there we've run those at West Tech before. They're very, very cool, but they're they are um, they had lots of fuel standoff when we were running. It was very, very cool. Uh, hello from Massachusetts. You're in the hospital. I hope you're doing okay, man. Yeah, <laughs> towing field trip. That's right. Crane. I'm sure that, that should be 227 cam or 272. Oh, and a TBI. Remember the part number by heart. If our heads and stroke seems crazy to run stock cam unless you were looking for a diesel torque, and then yes, yeah. But the the like I said, the the head has no effect on that. That I mean, we put it on there because we were looking to make power, but it it still shows what the relative changes are in the cams. The torque cam video you did on a few days ago really changed my mind. What the expectations were? Yeah, and that's this is why we test, man. How fast you hit the wall, torque is how far you want to move the wall. I didn't think I can would do that. With a bigger engine like a 441, drop the RPM range of the 224 cam. Yes, it would. You can see even with the 224 cam and big heads and a really good intake manifold, this thing only made peak power at 6,000 RPM. That's that's not very high. And this is only a 408, so if you went up in more displacement, it would move it down. 
Glad you went over this. I'm thinking about this for my 2500. To summarize, it's best to do the most recent research and spend time researching camshafts and torque converters for your application. Okay. Uh, BS, what's going on? I got some. I got one spilled for my 441 with AFR 245 head reds. It was a 228, 244 at 50 and a 114. Okay. Which one I've done the 408 option. I went with a Gen 453 to a 6 liter, 799s, 206, 212 cam. Still need to assemble and test. But that will work good on a 6 liter though. And I have some small cams that we ran on 6 liter stuff, so you could take a look at that. Aloha, Ralph, are you in Hawaii? <laughs> One doesn't drive down the road at full throttle. No, no, they don't. And then that's what we talked about. We're only talking about this demonstrates what happens when you do need the power when you're going up a grade. Building a 351 Windsor, Edelbrock top end kit. The rep said I'll lose torque if I get the Victor Junior head versus RPM, not according to your video. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. And if they've tested it and then they have the data, then that's good on them. I don't, I don't normally see that um, with a lot of heads that we've tested. And maybe he's talking about losing it at 600 RPM and not, not in a usable range. Planning on running a 393 AF250. Engine's currently my Fox body with a 242-246 cam. Think about going down to a 230-236. It, sure, it certainly should drive better, right? You would think. I mean, this is a big difference. And, you know, we went from 450 horsepower to, we ended up, we ended up going to 625 horsepower with a big enough camshaft in this. Uh, mainland, okay, now in Central Florida. BTR said, I'm sure that's supposed to be a 235, 248 cam. Cam motion said 236, 244. Both to replace my 235, 238. Yeah, so they want you to spread the exhaust duration out more. You'll gain more on the top. Decided to go with 799s over the 823s for added velocity to help with low speed torque and hope it works. Well, if you want power below 4,000 RPM, that head will work. That's what happens when you run the 799 versus the 823. It's about 4,000 and below that it makes more torque. But the 823s definitely make more power on the big end. And the gain that you will get from that will depend on the displacement and compression and, and um, how much camshaft you have in there. Because you, you need something to take advantage of that of that head flow. Not that, that, not that a cam works better with that kind of rectangular poor head the cams do the same thing with those heads it's just that you need enough power to utilize that airflow uh, glad to help ralph perfect then toe suburban kid hauler and and i i think i could go out on a limb and say that people would be much happier with too small of a cam than they would be with too big of a cam I don't know what you mean by thoughts. I don't remember if the cam card says it's got much vacuum at idle. Doesn't pull enough for brakes. The 206 cam in the 408 does. <laughs> it's, it has really high, uh, high idle vacuum. I was looking at the, st at the stock cam stuff. I think on the stock cam test, I think I had idle vacuum. I think I even had, <coughs> I think I even had cranking compression. But cranking compression can be affected by temperature and stuff too. But still, it gives us kind of an idea. It's funny, you think people think that they can correlate cranking compression with power output. <laughs> that would be a neat trick. <sighs> exactly, Sentra, exactly. That's exactly right. 
Camp was chosen by some guy in Bri named Brian in Kentucky. Yeah, he he knows camps, yes. Brian knows cams. <laughs> B knows C. <laughs> that should be, that should be a shirt for Brian. Stage run truck cam from BTR or my 408 cubic inch motor. Yeah. I think that that would work good. I, I think a truck Norris would work better. But that's up, that's up to you. I know that a truck Norris will make more power than a, um, and, and probably more, more low speed power too than a stage one truck cam. So you need a, you need a, um, a low buck truck. The low buck truck. Uh, getaway, and I, I have them in stock, ready to ship. <whistles> or if you want to go with the no springs, you could go to the guys from Brian Tooley have the no springs one too, which was only down five or six or whatever compared to the regular one. Apparently the lift didn't make a big difference. That's 50,000 lift. And it's not just 50,000 lift, it's a change of 10%. I mean, that, that's a lot. Because when you're going from, 50, from 500 to 550, that's a 10% change in lift. That's, you think that that would be pretty significant. But it didn't seem to make much difference. It didn't seem to respond very much. And then the test that they did recently with a, with a head that wanted the lift or should want the lift, Are there some general cam rules for low RPM torque? Uh, short duration is better for torque. I, I don't know about lift, uh, and I don't, I don't know about overlap. A sub-226 cam takes, can take hours to tune cruise and idle. A, two thirty, a 232 cam takes days. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is different, right? I'm going to build an L31 Vortec for my Tahoe. I want to do a 3 stroker. Any idea it would be a good cam for towing on my setup? Yes, something. These numbers, these numbers work with, uh, um, the duration numbers work with the small block Chevy, a 383 also. If you're looking at um, a, a 206, 212, or 212, 218 camshaft, and, and Comp and other people have those for a small block Chevy, um, that would be the right range. The The lift numbers are gonna be lower on the small block Chevy though. You trying to downsize some metal springs for a Gen 2 LT1? I don't know what the spring, I don't know springs off the top of my head for LT1s. I don't have any springs anyway that I know of. But Brian Tilly Racing has springs for that. I think that they use LS springs for those. Don't they use, don't they have a uh, beehives like packs or what, what, whoever he uses to make his springs? I don't know. Um, I don't remember what the, I went through that, but I've only, I think I've only flow tested a few LT heads. And I don't remember the setups. I don't remember the installed height and diameter and stuff. Looking for some towing benefits. Yeah. I was thinking I was liking the 4x4 comp cam. It's got a tight LSA for more bottom end. Yeah, the only thing that happens is the idle quality can go away. And, and on, a, on a small cam like that, you don't have to worry about um, piston to valve clearance. The cam should ship out after I get back from West Tech. New the LS family. I have a 5.3. Is porting the head good enough? I don't want to change the head. You don't have to change the head. You On a 5.3, you have the best head that you could put on there unless you do a ported version of that head or do an aftermarket head. And the best aftermarket head to put on there is a 205 trick flow head. But, uh, or, or now maybe the new <laughs> Ryan Dooley cannon valve head since it fits on there. Um, but I wouldn't port the head unless you're doing a camshaft and stuff. The, that head will already support a lot of power. You just put a cam in it, you can add 70, 80 horsepower if you want. And if you need a cam for that, I've got some. And not only that, they're on sale. 
trying to figure out a, a good uh, sale program deal to work with uh, when I go to LS Fest. So maybe a maybe a cam and t-shirt combo. Oh, I can feel a doggy. Hello, come here. Come on. Come on. Get up here. Get up here. Come on. Come, come on. Jump. Come here. Come here. Sorry. Get up here. There we go. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I know. I know. You're a good boy. So okay, go look around for something you want to steal. Uh, shop racing, uh, 169 shipped for the cam. 169er. Flashlight. Somebody follow up with that and tell me what comes next. I don't, I don't know what that warning is. I'm not, I'm not hip. <laughs> I need to have my, <laughs> I don't even know if people do that anymore. Do they do Bic lighters? I think now they do their phone with their light on <sighs> when they're yelling free bird. Uh, where do I get, where do I go to get the cam? You, um, I, I have my email address in a couple of these things. Um, go to my email or leave a comment on this video after the live feed, and I'll send you my email address, and then you just go to PayPal, and then just indicate your, your name and shipping address, what cam you want, and then um, we'll get it out to you. Cam plus a magnetic bowl. Kind you can stick to a, stick a logo in. Oh, oh, like a, uh, like a salad bowl. I'm curious to know if you take a stock LM7553 and swap cans with a stock LQ4 six liter, it will have any power and torque increase. It depends on what year the LQ4 cam is. If it's an early one, those have the same cam. If it's a later one, I think that those have the LQ9 cam. And then that is worth a little bit of power. If you take a look at, if you have a later one, if you take a look at the video that I have up where I tested all of the factory cams, we tested that later LQ, LQ9 camshaft. I think we called it the HO cam. I think it's the same cam as the L33. Uh, it, it will be comparable in terms of power. The power gain is not going to be a lot, but it is some. Um, so if you want to do that and it's free, then you can do that. I want your custom grind for the 3800. Well, let's see if it works first. Do you have any cans for a flat tap at 302? I'll take a look. Oh, the underhood trays. Okay, the ones that stick on the hood. Okay. Got to try to get the Truck Norris and LS9 cans. I have an LS9 cam if you want one of that. Want one of those. Or I have that 219 cam, which would be better. Uh, the LS9 cam, I don't recommend usually for anything. <laughs> Dan, what's going on? We're talking about stroker torque, uh, towing cams. I really want a wrong cam t-shirt. Those are the ones that I'll probably do for LS Fest. I have both cams. Just wonder if it's worth the labor. I, I don't think that I would do a cam swap for as little a gain as you get. In fact, I can, I can tell you what kind of gain you would get here. Let's see. Got to peek around my thing here. Ellis Cathedral Port. Go up to, I'm looking around here, 5.3. Richard Holder's Ultimate 5.3 LS Cam Test. And then we have the final. Here's the, here's the HO Cam, the HO Cam. Here is the final. LM7 cam. Yeah, it's it's like seven or eight horsepower. And 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 the and it actually loses power down low compared to the LM7. 
So I wouldn't do the uh, the L33 cam. Let's see if I have a... The LQ9 cam is the one. Yeah, the LQ9 cam is better. Um, let's see here. Let's get rid of that one. The LQ9 cam loses a touch down below 26 or 700 RPM, but is worth... Uh, starts gaining power at 4,400 RPM. And on this 5.3, it picked power up from 353 to 374. So it gained 20 horsepower. All the gains come from 45 to 65, if that's where you want it. If, you're, if, it, if this is in a truck, I, wouldn't, I don't think I would do this. But if it's in something you're, you want to rev out, it, it makes more power. The, the two cams that we tested... The LS Fest that I'm going to is, L I'm probably going to go to both. LS Fest West is the 26th and 27th, or 26th to the 28th of April. So it's coming up. Uh, Walter, I have Truck Norris, the low buck Truck Norris, the low buck truck, and 219, so which is one step above the Truck Norris. So either one of those, I have those. Cam and a fender blanket. Stroker cam good for a six liter. Uh, yeah, which one are which stroker cam are you talking about? None, none of these cams that I went over on the stroker are, are stroker cams. They're just cams. Trying to find TDC so I can mark it. A lot of folks advise never rotate it backwards because it will possibly jump time in the timing chain slot. How likely is this? Uh, the, you can spin the motor backwards. They use the same, same timing chains on motors that are reverse rotation. So that's not accurate. <laughs> you still have the same amount of slack forward or backward. That doesn't matter. It's not gonna, it's not gonna change. It's not gonna jump time. I have a 95 Suburban. Okay. Should I build a 454 or swap a six liter? It's probably going to be more expensive to swap it, uh, a cam swap in that thing. And actually what I would do, Rich, is I'd go to the wrecking yard and maybe just get a whole, uh, well, I know you probably can't do that. Oh, no, you probably could. You could, you could put your induction system from your 85 or from your 95 on the, um, on a Gen 6 motor, which would be a better motor than your Gen 5. Because it's a hydraulic roller, it has um, better heads, it's got a better camshaft, uh, you're going to get rid of the intake manifold, but... It was awesome when Rob snuck the rotary in there, yep. I, I, I am going to go to this year's uh, LS Fest in Bowling Green, I'll probably go with the guys from Brian Tilly Racing. And I'll have the V12 on display. So for low RPM, short duration, tight hydraulic roller. Yeah, that's typically short duration cams are what people would put in. And and if you if all you care about is real low speed power, um, I might even think about a single pattern. How much more to add to my order? What are, what are you adding to your order? Would you ever, ever ceramic coat? The hot side of a turbo. If so, what color? <laughs> well, the color choice is yours. Um, a lot of guys do ceramic coat the um, the the hot side. The only reason I want the LS9 cam is for the LS4. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get the parts together, so I need a bigger storage. Okay. A truck engine spinning at 6,000, pulling a trailer up a hill doesn't sound like a recipe for longevity. No. <laughs> no. No, the, the, when we were talking about the torque production for towing applications, we we're talking about 5,500 and lower. And actually, the torque number that I was given at the gains for that kind of application was 4,500.
What's the LS Fest? It's in Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. All the, all the LS people get together. Can drive a 91 Vet. That would be good. Waiting for parts on my 408. The GMC 3500. Will the 219 can be good for that? I think the 219 can would be good for a um, 408. If you're only interested in power from 5500 and lower, I think I would pick the, the low buck truck. Didn't Steve Morris make a V16? I think he did. Still think the best way to get more torque is more displacement. That definitely helps, and so is boost. To bed the RSX with two LS4s never came to life. Are billet blocks good for street high horsepower cars? Not not for street cars usually. Uh, I mean, the billet block is fine as long as it has water passages. But if it's a solid block, then I, I don't think I would do it. Think you're towing 60% of the time with your truck, get a 2500 with an 8.1, you'll be happy with the combo. The, the, the problem with bigger motors and, and bigger cams and stuff is that, like, I would be interested in seeing what the steady state cruise is, fuel mileage is, of this 408 with a stock cam and then with that 206 cam. Like, which one gets better mileage when you're just driving at 2,000 RPM going down the freeway, which even if you're towing is most of the time. I know having towed, towing the Omni with my truck out to Ohio, a lot of it was just open stretches of freeway. I mean, they're, they're rolling hills and stuff, but not, not steep grades. Steep grades were only a small part of what we did. I, I went through the Sierras, and then we went through the area in... Uh, you know, near Salt Lake City in Utah. Um, but a lot of it was just, was not that, it was just cruising down the road at 2000 RPM. And so I'd be curious to see which one had better mileage. As a painter, I can verify that true ceramic coating is beneficial for the hot side for cor corrosion. Yeah, that gets really bad. And I think it'll also help you know, maintain some of the heat, although the heat might come out, um, you know, going from the head to the, tur to the turbo. Do you see a powertrain nation episode where they bolted two big blocks together at the crank? I did. Has anyone heard bad things about the Summit Pro LS H-beam rods? I, I don't know how they could be bad given how much power we've made just with stock ones. So, if you put if you put um, Summit Pro less rods and pistons in it, your block is going to be the weak thing. Richard, what CFM difference have you seen from ported versus non-ported 706 heads? It depends on what you're talking about. Are you talking about just porting them without changing valves? Or you talk what are you talking about? Um, stock heads flow 240 ish or 245 or something like that. Um, I've seen them go way over 300 when they're professionally done, but that's bigger valves and stuff too. One of my diesel friends was commenting on 25 pounds of boost on a diesel. I told him to put 25 pounds of boost on 8.1 and see which one's faster. Yeah, and, and the other thing is that the, the 25 pounds does nothing if you, if you don't add a whole bunch more fuel to it. I live off Rolling Hills Road, nice. Pull the valve heads right off the motorhome. Nice. Nice. So let's see. Um, let's see on our combination here. The takeaway for me when I did the all of the stock cams is that um, they all lost power compared to the, <laughs> to the LM7 camshaft. They all lost power down low. Uh, and I wanted to come back and look at it because I, I was talking to my neighbor and he was saying that he had done a bunch of LS6 cam 
uh, upgrades for um, guys with these 5.3 trucks. And he said that, that it seemed like it was better everywhere. And I didn't remember it being like that. And I'm looking at the test of the LM7 versus the LS6. And, and just like all the other ones, the, the LS6 cam is down on power from 4,500 down to 2,500. So from 25 to 45, the stock cam is better. And then the LS6 cam, like the other cams, is way up. I mean, it's up, it's up like 55 or 60 horsepower. Where's that to 408? Yeah, so three, yeah, 55. It's up 55 horsepower, which is a lot. But down at 2,500, it's down 315 to 350. So it's down 35 foot pounds. So for a truck application, I don't think I'd put that in there unless it was a truck that I like. <laughs> if it was a short bed, two wheel drive with slicks on it that I wanted to go race, then I would put that with a 3,500 stall in it, then I would go do that. But not for a stock application, not something with a stock stall converter in it. And, that, and that's the way I'll bring that up uh, because that's what all of the cams, all of the factory cams I tested, with the exception of that LQ9 camshaft, the LS7, the LS9, the LS2, 3. I didn't ever test an LS4 camshaft. Um, LS7, LS3, LS2, LS1, LS6. All of those camshafts did kind of this. They lost power down low compared to that truck cam. And that's what you'd expect of, of the OEMs designing cams to make power in the RPM range that they want to make power in. I don't know if this went through, but Nick's garage tested a 440 with a long ram twin carb intake. He claims it, he claims is for sub 3000 RPM torque made 562 at 3000. Yeah, we, like I said, we, we, I commented on that before. <clears throat> we tested one of the, we, the guys at, or at West Tech had a, a customer that had one of those and his was a stroker version of a 440. I don't remember what the displacement was, but it had the Sonic Ram deal with the two Carter carburetors on it. <clears throat> and they ran it and they kept lowering the RPM. They got down to 2000 RPM, which is where the thing made peak torque at. Now this was a stroker motor um, with that induction system on there, but it, it's a really long runner deal and it wants to make power pretty low. wouldn't advise doing yourself. Oh, you're talking about the coating? Yeah, I don't think I would do that. My LM7 does good in stock form. I get about 13 to 15 miles per gallon. Our Texas Speed 215 CNC Cathedral Port heads too small for a 408 stroker. It depends on the power output that you're trying to make. What do those heads flow? And are they 215 CNC ported? Are they, so do they flow 300? Uh, BS, you're going to have to look up the, I don't know what the runner lengths are. This was a long time ago. This was 20 or 30 years ago. It was a long time ago. I don't even know. That might've been with a 901. I don't even know if that, I, I'll bet that that date is not even available anymore. I think, I think a Sonic Ram has got to be, I don't know, 30 or 35 inches long. Pretty lengthy. Are those runners like the 426 Max Wedge Cross Ram deals? I think the Max Wedge Cross Ram is much shorter than these. These are the ones that went all from one side all the way over the valve covers and then have the carburetor sitting kind of above the exhaust manifolds. That's a Sonic Ram is what it's called. Yeah, they're they're about they're three feet long. <laughs> they're pretty long. 
Let's see if somebody has a an idea there. There are long and short versions of it. Let's see. Yeah, that's really, really long. That's heck along. Let's see if they have. Sonic Ram Commando. D50 Ram induction system. Long and short versions of it. Nobody's saying what the, or this thing isn't saying what the length is. Uh, 30 inches, this one on all par, they have good stuff. So maybe it's not as long as I thought it was. 30 inches is still pretty long, but I thought that that's what this thing said. It's pretty freaking long. For a variable intake runner, I did. Do you think the smaller diameter inner tube is best near the head port or near the plenum? It, it's not going to make any difference. The customer bought me a ported 706 head with 2 inch intake and 157 exhaust. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the the stage two heads that we did, uh, that Brian sent from Total Engine Airflow, and that they've sent since then, I think is a 204 and an inch 55 or something. But that's that's in the realm. Um, the one we had was divided runner from the head to the carb. Claim that was better than the factory. So I know if I can make the heads, the oil go only to the mains and the forward. I am making a rotary valve head, so I'm removing the cam and all its accessories. Yeah, you can you can stop oil flow from going up. You just have to plug it. Because on that motor, though, isn't the oil just going to go up through the push rods? You just have solid push rods. Well, you're not going to have push rods, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you're going to have rotary valves, you're not going to have a cam in there then? That, that seems like a lot of work. <clears throat> The <clears throat> rotary valve stuff has been tried a lot in the past and has not been very successful. So, you know, going in, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I think it's awesome, but it's it's been tried a lot. Upgrade to an LS4 cam, 42, 42. I'll say it's 114, but what's the, what's the duration is the thing that I care about. It had, the the one that we saw the coats one had um, uh, drive sprockets on the front that drove off the crank. You're gonna just shoot out with Brian's new Hemi cams. Yeah, well, I mean they tested them already, so they know what they do compared to the stock one. I do a sleeve valve instead of a rotary valve and a clean slate, not using a factory block. At all times, except when the rotary valve is perfectly lined, I'm leery of the two kinks they are must go through. Yeah. George Coates perfected the rotary valve. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it didn't work very well, though. 318 CFM at 600. Yeah, that's good. That's enough to support a lot of power. Brian, a uh, thousand CC injectors are not too big for a um, supercharged uh, LS stroker. That's fine. It's better to not use all of it. And then that way, if you have to go up to E85, you can do that. Kawasaki two-stroke as a sort of rotary valve. Sixty-three Plymouth Sport Fury, four twenty-six max, max wedge, long ram, correct motor, four speed. Somebody's selling that. That's pretty cool. Question, would a BTR Red Hot Cam work in an LM7? Would it make good power? Yeah, just take a look at the video that I have up where we tested the Red Hot Cam. You can see what it does. It makes good power. Um, it makes, it, it loses low speed power compared to the other stuff, compared to the Hot Rod or the Truck Norris Cam. What CC injector is good for a 700 horsepower from a 5.3 liter? Well, take your injector flow and multiply it by 16, and that will give you an idea how much power it can support. I would put 80s in it. How are the long runner dual throttle intakes for low RPM torque production? I haven't seen any testing on them. You, ha, have you been watching this channel? Because I've tested them. I tested the Edelbrock one and I tested the um, Holly one. And the, the long runner dual throttle body cross ram Holly fabricated thing um, makes more low speed torque than the truck manifold does. Uh-oh, Grooves, it got, got the tip of your finger. One of the guys uh, got their finger cut by putting it in the went in the impeller of a turbo or a, or a supercharger. I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> just, the, just the tip. Do higher injector pressures provide better mixing intake charge? I haven't seen that. We, we tried different fuel pressures to try to improve uh, fuel economy and atomization and stuff. It, it didn't work in the ranges that we tested. But you can try it. If you can adjust the fuel, then just raise the pressure up and, and, you know, if nothing else, it will make you feel better. You can tell people, yeah, I got better droplet size for better atomization and better surface area contact and all of that. Better charge cooling. I've optimized charge cooling. I have changed the charge cooling by as much as two degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what it is. I 
Uh, thank you, by the way, to all the people who have ordered cams. For you guys that are waiting, uh, after I get down to West Tech, uh, stuff, stuff will get shipped out and then um, we'll get stuff to you. I haven't touched any of the PayPal money. We won't do that until everything gets shipped out. In diesels and direct injection, more pressure gives more atomization. That's why diesels have 3,000 PSI. Yeah, but I, what I was talking about was not going from... 43 PSI to 3,000 or 30,000. It was going from 45 to 60. Richard, have you ever used motel lifters? I've never heard of that. Part number 5920 out of these. I just read online that they're rated at only 6509 RPM. <laughs> that's, that's oddly specific unless that's a typo. Uh, I can tell you that we're running factory hydraulic roller lifters from the wrecking yard that have a hundred and whatever thousand, two hundred thousand miles on. I know how much it has, and we're running lots of runs to 7,700 RPM. So take that for what it's worth. With cam 660 springs lifters, etc. What's the highest or the highest you would spin at six at five three? Well, I I I wouldn't. Why, why do you want to run lots of RPM? That would be my question. I would want to have a conversation about why you want lots of RPM and, and do you have a combination that's going to make power up there? The, the springs are not going to determine and, and nor are the lifters are not going to determine what RPM rate you can run. They're going to help, but spring rate and, and the ability to have 660 lift is not going to determine the stability of the spring nor is it going to determine the stability of the camshaft, which is going to affect how stable this stuff is at RPM. So there's a lot of things that have to happen for spring rate or for, for RPM. <laughs> Morale lifters, that's what I'm thinking of. Morale lifters and 6,500 RPM. Yeah, I don't think that that's, I don't think that's a real thing. The rover PSI is 25 to 42 with an injector rated at 16 pounds at 45. It didn't go up to 60 rudder. Just try it and see what happens. You don't, I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the droplet size or the atomization is of that injector at that fuel, at that fuel pressure. I know we want to look at all the little things. <laughs> Got to recognize that they're little things and they might not do anything. Look, I would look at the big things first. Runner length, displacement, compression. Fuel injector position. Nose is over at 61, so I want to spin it to 8,500. <laughs> yeah. With my long runner truck intake manifold and my 206 camshaft. I, I'm all for guys wanting to run RPM. It, it's just that it, it takes stuff to do that. And the more RPM you run, the more chance you have of breaking something. A motor that will run for three or four or 500,000 miles at 6,000 RPM might last one pull at 8,000 RPM or, or may never get there. Yeah, Dan, that's that, <laughs> so the, the factors of 10. <laughs> that's good. Do you want to cruise down the freeway at 8,000 like a cup car? Yeah, those guys are cruising at 200 too.
It's my first build and I really feel like 6,000 RPM leaves a lot to be desired when you can spin it to 7,500. Also run a high RAM, red hot cam, and seven H headers imported two eighty two forty threes. Well, look at the look at the five three. Look at all of the testing that I did on that L thirty three, and that should give you an idea. That I mean, we we ran the red hot cam in it. We ran we have ported heads on it. We have a good intake manifold on it. We were, I've run a high RAM on. I've also run a low RAM on it. I've run a fast on it. I've run all of that stuff, and uh, now we have that. Stage four LS3 cam in it, which is going to make more power than the Red Hot cam does. Um, and we're running it to 7,500. So you can certainly do that if you have if you have what we have on there, which is just that we have the um, the extreme spring on it, whatever that is, extreme RPM spring. It might be that 660. Um, but we've also set up the coil bind. Uh, I think it's probably about 30 from coil bind the way that it's set up, if I remember right. That's also important too for spring frequency. Because if you've ever watched um, the high speed slow motion stuff of springs uh, in operation, they do all kinds of like hula hoop wiggling. If you get them close to coil bind, uh, not at coil bind, but close to coil bind, um, when uh, at max lift, there isn't room, you know, if they're close, there isn't a lot of room for them to wiggle around. And so that's bad. Yeah, Spintron, that, that all comes from, all of that design comes from Spintron testing. So you want guys that have done a lot of that, and the guys from BTR have done a lot of that. Something about 7,000 RPM sounds good. Yeah, this this LS motor, this L33, when we're making the 7,600 RPM runs, it sounds good. Especially when you make 3,000 to 7,600. It sounds really good. Wah. And then on, on some of the other, like the DTS dynos, you can make it from any RPM to any RPM. Uh, that's... Um, when we do the stuff at Brian Tooley, they, I think that James runs it from like 2,000 or 2,500 or something. I don't think, I, I think that a lot, somebody mentioned something about being able to feel if, feel like if it's still pulling. I, I disagree with that, especially in the lower gears. I think people rev it and it's not making power out there. And they, because of the gearing, the thing is accelerating and they still, they think that the thing is still pulling. And I, I don't think that that always happens. I also think that a lot of guys um, drive past or <laughs> try to drive through valve float. And that's also not good. Also not good. Yeah, Aaron, take a look at that. That what you're doing is exactly what that L33, one of one of the many iterations that we went through on that L33. So just copy that and it, it will work. And on that note, guess what? It has been more than an hour. It is time to go. I've got places I gotta be. I gotta do, go do some testing, but I will see you guys all later.